Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis. With me today is June Liu, Seth Geis, John McTavish. How you guys doing? Good. Good, man. We picked up some uh, artisanal pies, a key lime, a banana, um, caramel, and a, and a, I think like a chocolate somewhat pie. I'm, I'm pretty excited for, for some pie, you know what I'm saying? How nice. big are the pies? You got all those pies? Well, you know, the, the one pie is like a, I don't know, like, what would you say, like a 14-inch, 16-inch pie? And then the other ones are like just like little personal pies, so like eight inch. Yeah, but whatever. you only get like a quarter forkful for your calorie intake for the day, right? So. Oh yeah, no, I can't eat it. I, I basically have to put it in my mouth, kind of swish it around, and then spit it, it out. Yeah, yeah and okay. go throw up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. To throw up after eating. <laughs> I mean, it tastes good. That's so why today, your teeth is, that's why your teeth is all rotten. So yeah. that throw up. All right, so today we are talking about the Aganors Leaf Supreme Leaf Robusto. Cigar is 5 inch by 52 ring gauge. Uh, comes out of the Tapso factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper binder filler all from Nicaragua. Uh, price point is $9.95. Cigar was released in March of 2020. So, all that out of the way, June. What was your overall experience like with the cigar? I thought this was a good cigar. Um, Fanboy. Uh, and aside, and how kind of how loud it is, it's kind of weird, but we can talk about that later. Um, but this is uh this is you know I'm I'm probably one of the bigger fans of Tapsa and I, I am a big fan of Tapsa so you know this is really no different than like what you you kind of should expect out of them um, you get a lot of like creamy bread there's like some pouring our funk to it uh, baking spices cinnamon white pepper cedar um, and it's just uh, it, it leaves um, like really nice tannins on your palate as well medium plus strength uh medium body um you know it, it was basically those good notes until the final third where it kind of got a bit sharp uh at, at that point i kind of rated it average whereas first couple of thirds i thought it was good uh i had quite a bit of burn issues though um this thing does not burn well uh it had some tunneling uneven burn uh two relights multiple touch-ups so um you know it's a uh, it's not made at aj's factory but I like the cigar. I said, what were your overall thoughts? <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, listen, I had burn issues as well. Um, I, I thought the cigar really started out nice. You know, I was getting some like almond, walnut, peppery spice profiles. Um, There's some cinnamon, really good, good first third. Um, show transitioning throughout, it kind of went downhill in the second. And I thought the final third just did get a little bit harsh. Um, kind of like June said, um, decent profile, seemed young. Um, and the construction was not that top notch on it. Um, but I guess I could say I somewhat enjoyed the cigar. I uh, wasn't blown away by it though. All right, John, what were your thoughts? You want to talk fanboy? I have, I have this suspicious feeling I'm going to come out on top on this one. Um, I'm echoing a lot of what people have said already. I thought the first third was like spectacular. There's baking spices, red pepper flake. Um, this, you know, bready note that uh, sort of was carried through. It was just delicious creaminess. Um, second third was still good. Uh, bread, cedar, uh, didn't, didn't quite have the same level of complexity as that first third. And then as everyone else has experienced that last third, a little sharp, uh, kind of a little basic, um, kind of made me think this cigar is young, like Seth was saying. And I think, <clears throat> you know, this is one of those cigars where I really get the sense that in three or four months, this could be like contender for top 25 cigar of the year um because i feel like it you know the tobaccos just seem like they haven't had enough time to marry and like everyone else has said um uh, man like i practically had to hold a torch to this thing while i was smoking it now i did smoke a second one uh and the burn was uh, much much better on the second one so you know one was a subpar experience the second one i would qu qualify as maybe good to very good um but that that first one was that i did for review i mean that that was terrible tunnel, two relights, and a touch-up, so not good. Aaron, you? I thought the cigar had a nice flavor combination in the first third. Um, some components started dropping out in the second, so took it down to average and kind of maintained that level of enjoyment the rest of the way. Um, as you guys had mentioned, uh, had some burn issues, uh, a bit of a snug draw, so kind of construction was kind of okay. Um, I was hoping that that first third would have continued on a little bit longer, but that it wasn't, wasn't to be, so a little bit of a disappointment there. Um, you know, they've announced a, a Toro Vitola now for this, so I might be interested in trying that out. Um, but really for the Robusto, 
um, not, you know, not, not that big of a fan. I'm not sure I'd, I'd come back to it. And uh, I don't know if the Toro would be different or not. Um, might just be the same and a little bit longer. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, yeah, not not a big not a big fan of this one. All right, let's get into the scores. Start at the top with John at 6.77. Uh, June was next at 6.37. Seth gave it a 5.85, and I gave it a 5.50. So, uh, John, 6.77. Hell yeah. Uh, it should have been higher, actually. This this is a guy that should have been in the sevens. Um, you know, we talked about this uh, last year with the top cigars of the year where some of the better cigars profile-wise were being held back by construction. And, you know, I would say that that's not really typical of Aganorsa. So, you know, chalk it up to maybe a young cigar or a new cigar, and it needs a little bit of time. Uh, we'll come back to that band issue in a little bit. Who's up next? All right, June, 6.37. Yeah, 6.37 is a good score. Um, you know, definitely the burn, average burn, uh, you know, doesn't help. But if, I, if you're just talking about – if I'm just talking about flavors, I think it's a good cigar. I also think it's a young cigar, like what like Seth and what the rest of you guys probably think as well. Um but that's most of the taps of stuff. I feel like if you lay down their stuff like four to six months, they all taste better after that little bit of time, like for sure. Um, and I have, you know, first thing experience with that. So um, good score, though. Looking forward to uh, smoking the other one and, and, and more uh, in the next you know few months. All right, Seth, 5.85. Yeah, I mean, that, that pretty much adds it up. Um, construction hurt this thing. Final third, final third hurt this thing. Um, actually, the final third actually did better than I thought. Second third hurt this thing. So, but I really liked how it how it began. Um, it, you know, just yeah. kind of want a little bit more from it. What about you? Yeah, my five point five matches up well. I mean, it was above average flavor profile. Uh, construction just held it back a little bit. But um, even with great construction, it would have been you know just maybe shooting for right at six. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Construction kind of put put me off a little bit on it. it just you know, I can go for maybe a snug draw or a iffy burn, but when you give me both, I'm not really a fan. So, uh, all right, final thoughts on this one. Man, uh, what is what is up with that band? I mean, listen, I'm I'm no marketing genius, but uh, <clears throat> that is that is one of the jankiest bands I've seen in a long time. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't know how it passed the marketing department because I took one look at that and I was like, is this like oh, a John like a, the John the the leaf is their strength marketing the band is not their strength remember well that makes perfect sense because yeah. that 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 is that is definitely the case here <laughs> i mean this this looks like you know it's a cigar from mike's cigar shop out of uh wherever uh i, I like i was like this is an agonor so like this doesn't look like any other branding or color or you know it's like this janky ass paper band and i mean I, i'm i'm ripping on their marketing team really bad but i feel like you know this i, I really don't know how they came out with this cigar with that band it's just not it's not good you have to look at <clears throat> look at what their old buena, Co buena cosecha band oh, yeah. was like um, oh yeah that's right and then there's another what was the other brand they had um it was like an awful tobacco leaf band i mean it was terrible i'd have to look it up and send it to you but it was bad I mean, can you imagine how good this would have looked if it was Supreme Leaf in like a like a metallic silver or metallic gold on on the yellow instead of the uh, the cartoonish white and whatever? Oh yeah, the the it's kind of the thing. Like the packaging is like it's cool, but at the same time you're like this sucks. Like I'm like I was proud of them for like I'm like okay I see where they're going. They failed, but it was it was it was a nice try. Um, I, I like just, that it I says just Max, that... Max and Cubans on the side of it. If you look at it, it says like Max y Los Cubanos. I just worry that the uh, the band's going to be off-putting and people aren't going to try this cigar because they see the band and they're like, oh, this looks like it's not very it good. It does stand out for what it's worth. <laughs> it does yeah, stand out. It does very, stand like, out. Vibrant, you know, it does stand it's out. A bit slightly loud. Vibrant. Slightly loud? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's, it's not got a, it's got a bit of that uh, 1970s Houston Astros look to it. There we go. So, See, pulling out the know. baseball references. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So. Anyways, everyone should smoke it. It's it's uh, it's a nice cigar. Yeah. I'm going to compare it to the Camacho stuff. The Camacho stuff's little. It's more cons like it's that like they got its little pattern going for them. It's, it's classy. Yeah. It's consistent. Yeah, this is definitely outside the pattern of their. Yeah, brand. I remember what that other? Oh. Because like they're uh, the Miami. Sabor. Oh, yes, yeah, Sabor. 
the Sabor one. It had like one, this weird which red had like the leaf something. on it. Yeah, it, it looked like, like it looked like was, some throwback to uh, like uh, yeah. you know. Or even like the video bonds. games or oh, something. Like... Yeah, it's. I mean, it's all. But yeah, I agree with John. They should have just put it like the good cast for name. This band's on it. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, if you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us as well as check out the full written review on the website, developingpalace.com. Follow us on all the social media channels, and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Supreme League!